before before we swear the witness, <clears throat> uh, I want to ask the defendant or the plaintiff if he understands that we are now uh, on videotape, that this deposition is being videotaped. Yes. When we last spoke, was the witness assuming the identity of Paul Benassi? Yes. Who is the witness now? Question. When the guy make a suggestion that, that we, we have both the plaintiff and his counsel acknowledge that they have no objection uh, pursuant to the rules which provide for notice of videotape deposition, that they're agreeable to this portion of the deposition being taped? We certainly should do that. Is, is defendant, uh, excuse me, is plaintiff and plaintiff's counsel agreeable to proceeding for a period of time with the video deposition? Not only am I in agreement, I would join in the request and that's what I think is good, yes. Yes. Again, what witness do, what personality is the plaintiff assuming at this moment in time? West Lee. Is it possible for the plaintiff to, to go back into the personality of Paul for a few minutes? It's possible. <coughs> Can the witness do that? Yes. Okay. Is the witness now Paul Benassi? No. Would the witness become Paul Benassi for a few moments? Yes. Paul? Yeah. Okay. Is Paul Benassi now the witness? And Paul Benassi has been sworn to tell the truth. Is that your understanding, Mr. Benassi? Yes. Mr. Benassi, I asked you a series of questions prior to the time that we took a break. The gist of which related to your ability to give full and complete answers to the questions that you have been asked at this deposition not only today but in the past three days. Do you recall those questions? Yes. And do you recall what you told me about your ability to give full and complete answers to the questions? Yes. Could you repeat <coughs> what you believe your ability to give full and complete answers to all of the questions that have been asked of you? Yes. I am able to give full and complete information about <clears throat> activities and events that have occurred in any of the personalities who have fully integrated into myself. The information sometimes is not complete because there are still uh, other personalities who have not been integrated and even when they're co-conscious are not able at the spur of the moment to give details uh, because while I'm giving my information and their thoughts coming in, it overloads the system and it creates a headache and then that makes me unable to access memory at a quick rate. And the upshot of that testimony means, does it not, that the answers that you have given in this deposition may not have been fully complete? Some. Most have been complete. There are a few details that uh, Mikey has wanted or tried to add at different times and has done so in a couple of instances. And there are events which Mikey <coughs> Or, excuse me, which Paul has not been able to convey because they're solely in the possession of another personality. Is that not correct? Yes. Do you recall when you were sworn in <coughs> at the very beginning of this deposition on October the 13th, 1983? Yes. Okay, do you recall uh, Mr. Gaines? asking you in the very beginning of the deposition uh, who your personalities were and then just uh, uh, 
saying to you, ask, going through and listing all of your personalities, and he listed uh, several, 10, 15 personalities, you would call that. Yes, those were just personalities that were acquainted with his client. Well. And there were other personalities that were later discovered after that. Well. These are the questions and answers to that, his, to uh, his, to his, to his inquiry. At the time that list was made, like I said, I was not, all the personalities were not uh, found yet. There were some that were found after that was completed for him. I believe that Mr. Gaines asked you He wants to know all of the personalities that he might, that he was able to assume for purposes of his questions that would be involved in this action, and he wants wanted to swear everybody in. I believe that that's at page four of your uh, original testimony on the first day, and he asked you uh, which of your te personalities testified before the grand jury, and. Uh, he wanted to know if there were approximately 18 personalities. And you, he read you the names and you indicated that that included all of the personalities. Do you all recall? the personalities who testified, not all of the personalities. There are several personalities that have nothing to do with anybody involved in this case, and therefore their names have not been listed. He okay, wanted he, those names, not he, outside information. He then asked you, do all of these personalities have the ability to communicate with Paul so that Paul can, in fact, speak for them? And he asked you that question at page 10, line 18 of this deposition. Do you recall that question? Yes. And he asked you whether you could, in, in fact, speak for the other personalities and whether there were any that you could not speak for. And your answer, I can speak for most of them. And Mr. DeCamp said, any, and the witness said, because most of them have been integrated. That was your answer. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. You said there is only one that has not been integrated so far, and that is Mikey Benassi. Do you yes. recall that answer? And he asked you, he said, Mikey has not your answer. He's integrated into being an interior personality. He doesn't come out externally. Do you recall that? That was an agreement that has been disagreed, I mean, re-agreed on he can come out. After the first deposition that was agreed on between me and him, because I started that he was trying to tell me things during the first deposition that I was not able to uh, relate in a method that was expedient, because I was relating one thing, he was trying to tell me another. It's like listening to several people tell you something at once. You can't discern it all at the first sitting. And then you told Mr. Gaines that if Mikey had something to say, you would let him know. Is that, do you yes. recall that testimony? Yes. Okay. But, but that's not in fact what happened, is it? You didn't let him know every time that Mikey had some additional memories. Normally, Mikey tells me things, but when questions come up that I can answer and he can answer, we try to answer it, and as soon as I have been answering, it takes a moment for him to tell me, well, I have something to say. And by that time, the question, another question was <coughs> posed to me, and I felt <coughs> best to go on, even though I was confused at all. So. Mr. Benassi, we've asked that this portion of the deposition be videotaped because of the questions and answers that you gave both to Mr. Gaines when he first started taking your depositions and the answers that you gave to me just prior to the videotape. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay, do you, want, do you recall that I, <clears throat> excuse me, strike that. Are the defendants able to rely on the testimony that was given by you 
in the first three days that this deposition was taken as a full and complete and accurate accounting of the facts that you testified to as Paul Benassi. Yes. And the defendants do not have to be concerned that you will come back at another time in another personality and contest the truthfulness, the validity, or the completeness of those answers. Like I said earlier, there is some things that were omitted, and the reason is because there's one person that is involved in this lawsuit that I have not been able to uh, question at all, and that is Larry King. And without having him around, it is impossible to put things in a complete fashion because he's not here to defend himself or ask questions that would go into a smooth... Mr. Benassi, this is a very straight and direct question. Are the defendants able to rely on the testimony that you have given under oath as Paul Benassi speaking for all of the personalities that were also sworn and that you said would speak out if necessary as reliable, as accurate, as complete? I have never said complete. I said accurate. The information is accurate. That is it. Completeness? No. I have been stating that for the last 10 minutes. Complete? No. So, in other words, you could get on the witness stand at the time of trial, and you intend to, I assume. Is that correct? Yes. And testify that there were other personalities that weren't present at the deposition or weren't integrated and you now have new memories about the facts. They're not new memories. They're old memories that simply have not been stated before. And I am not Paul right now. I am Wesley. Why are you Wesley now? Because I am tired of you people doing this to him. I was attempting to make everything go away all of the time. I don't care about any of this stuff. Why are you here then? Why? Because I'm tired of what you're doing to Paul. I'm tired of what you're doing to him. What is it that we're doing to Paul? What is it that you're doing to him? You're questioning him. You're sitting there saying things that don't make any sense. Do you understand, Wesley, that Paul brought this lawsuit? This is Paul's no. lawsuit. No. Paul didn't bring the lawsuit. Who brought the lawsuit? Mikey brought the lawsuit. Why is the name on the petition and the complaint listed as Paul Benassi? Because we had to go under Paul Benassi's name because he's the body. Well, who's Mikey? Mikey's a personality who contains more information than Paul ever did because Paul's life is just like... Nothing. So the defendants and the jurors are not going to be able to rely on the reliability of what Paul's told us? Yes, they are. What I'm saying is that Mikey is the one who, in fact, started relating memories in 1986. He is the one who went to NPI. He is the one who started telling the police everything. That is why, from 1986 till 19, till the time I graduated, people called me Mike and not Paul. Paul couldn't understand why people called him Mike. But, Paul's information that he has given is true and is accurate because he has gotten all the information from the other personalities that have integrated with him. They have not integrated with Mikey, with him. Mr. Who are you now? Wesley. Wesley, let me just give you an example. Who testified before the Franklin Grand Jury on June 12, 1990? Who testified? Mm -hmm. There were several personalities that testified. I cannot list all of them right now. It took us two weeks to figure that out. Afterwards or before? Afterwards. Okay, so you, you don't even have a recollection of who testified on June the 12th, 1990 in front of the Franklin Grand Jury? Not at this moment, no. So you don't recall who told the Grand Jury how many times Paul Benassi had seen Robert Wadman? No, I don't.
who testified before the grand jury on June the 26th, 1990? Which one of your personalities? There were several of them, as, I've, as, as Paul and Mikey have stated. So you don't know whether it is accurate or not and complete that the personality who says that they saw Robert Rodman <coughs> with Alicia Owens three times between 1980 and 1986 was incomplete or, or <coughs> accurate. Do you? That is accurate. That is accurate. <coughs> yes. Well, is it accurate then? When you testified in this deposition that Paul Benassi had seen Robert Wadman nine to ten times with Alicia Owen between 1980 and 1986. When I testified about that, I was testifying to the number of times that I have seen Robert Wadman at parties or otherwise where Alicia Owen was present, and that is correct. But seeing him with her personally, with his arm around her, it was about three. But at parties, but, I was relating where I had seen them together. Or, I mean, not, not as if they were a couple, but as if they were in. Now, is this all of your personality speaking, or is this the memory of just um, Jer Jeremiah um, Wesley. Wesley? I contain all the memories of everybody. And yes, there are, there are dates that I don't remember, but then that's due to human nature. How many people can tell you what they did when they were 12 years old? on a certain day. For the record, this is the first time Wesley's ever been out or I've ever had any. If Wesley <coughs> contains all of the memories, why hasn't Wesley been present to testify so that there could be a complete record in this case? Why? Like I said, I didn't want anything to do with this. But until, as... Until today, I was totally against him. I was totally against Paul against Mikey. I hated what they were doing. How do you think it makes me look to sit there and remember that I was a prostitute, to remember that I used drugs, to remember that I did those things? I don't like to remember those things. I don't want to bring those up. That's why I have tried to destroy them. Have you tried to keep them from remembering all of the facts and events as they occurred? I've attempted in the past. But normally, I just let it go anymore. Wesley, do you have a suggestion as to how we might be able to get at the truth, the complete truth, not just part of it, but the full and complete truth as you know it and as you intend to tell it to a jury? Yes. And w what's your suggestion? I can do it. You can do it? Yes. But up until this point, do you not agree that this deposition has not been complete with respect to all of the facts and circumstances? Not all of the facts, but everything that's been said has been true. But not complete. But not complete. There ain't that much to complete it with. It's just like a jigsaw puzzle. You gotta put it together a little bit. Can we go off the record for you? Do you want to be called Mr. Benassi or Wesley? Wesley. Wesley, how many other per are, are you integrated? Not at all. Now, initially we were told by Paul that everyone was integrated into one personality except for Mikey and Poppy the Jungle Boy. Yes. Do you recall that testimony that was given by yes. Mr. Benassi? And that was his belief. Okay, but now you're telling me that that's not accurate. Is that correct? No, it's not accurate. What is accurate as far as the personalities that are not integrated? You see, I've never considered myself a personality. That's why when Paul said that all the personalities were integrated, he was actually accurate. But I'm not. I don't feel like I'm a personality of him. I feel like I'm a separate person. How many persons or personalities are not integrated into Paul Benassi? Just Mikey, Poppy. 
and you. Are there any others? No. Why did we not hear about you as a non-integrated personality early in the deposition? Why? Mm -hmm. Because it was simply not known by them. But I you, simply went into hiding it. You're representing now that you know everything that has happened to Paul Benassi and all of Paul Benassi's personalities. Yes. From what date forward? From 1974 on. <clears throat> You were created in 1974? Yes. Okay. And what triggered your creation, Leslie? I don't believe I can relate that information at this time because it has no value to this. Plus, it is... I can't. You're under oath. You're testifying. I'm not under oath yet. You've never given me the oath. Is he not sworn? No, you didn't swear. Remember, we suggested that. Let's swear, Mr. Wesley, right now. Trace your honor, please. You swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You, Wesley, Benazzi. Yes. Is it Wesley Benazzi? No, it's just Wesley. Should I call you Mr. Wesley? Better Wesley. swear him again, since we, were, we swore a different person. Let's swear this person. What is your name, sir? West Lee, L E E. West Lee, two words? Yes, two words. Mr. Lee, do you swear to tell the truth throughout this deposition? Yes. Okay. Would you please be sworn again by the court reporter? Do you, Mr. Wesley, swear to tell the truth and all the truth and nothing to yourself yet? Yes, I do. Let me ask you first. You have answered a series of questions under the persona of West Lee. Yes. Are the answers that you have given to those questions within the last half an hour true and accurate answers? Yes. Are they complete answers? Yes. Now I'm going to ask you, what triggered the arrival or development or birth of your personality, West Lee, in 1974? I cannot give that information under direct orders. Orders by whom? I cannot say. Mr. DeCamp, would you please instruct your client when he has to answer these questions? Yes. You're supposed to answer these questions. Does this have to do with Monarch? Yes. If I use the code, will that help? Which I just obtained in the last hour. <clears throat> D6. 413782, program XPY Eagle, Alex Hope. Please go ahead and answer all questions. I was created by a government program. Which government program? Monarch. And what is Monarch? Monarch is an operation that was created by the United States government to create spies for other countries. They use children for the purpose that they are easily integrated into multiple personalities because they can dissociate. Monarch is a program that is run by Michael Angelo Aquino, who was an Army Reserve Colonel at Presidio. He is also the leader of the Temple of Set. He is also, he also runs a child daycare center. He also is involved in human sacrifice. Is he employed by the United States? Yes. At what facility? Presidio, California. Is that in San Francisco area? 
Pacific yes. Naval Base? Yes. Do you know what rank Michael Aquino holds? He was a colonel. Is he currently employed there? I am not aware of the current situation. Now, describe the program again, the Monarch program. Monarch, as I said, was a program that used children to make multiple personalities for future use as spies and as a way to take over the United States government. The personalities were created at the first. Who, excuse me, who was intending to take over the United States government? I do not know that information. Did you understand Mr. Aquino to be working on behalf of the United States or against the United States? I believe he was working on behalf of the United States. So some segment of the United States was trying to take over the United States government? The plan that Aquino had in it was he wanted to usher in the Antichrist which is talked about in the Bible. He yeah. This was a government-sponsored program? Yes. Okay. You were seven years old at the time that you were recruited? I was actually three years old when it first began, but I was not created until later on. Who created you? I was created by Monarch. Do you mean Mr. Aquino? Who in Monarch created you? I was created by Monarch. I do not know who. What were you told when you were four years old that you recall now about the Monarch program? When I first got involved, I was molested by an airman from Offutt Air Force Base who was involved in Monarch. His job was to recruit kids from the local neighborhood who he could make dissociate by doing traumatic things to them at a very young age. Later on, when they get to school age, they would simply pick me up at school and I would simply miss a day or two for training. Now, is it your testimony that there was a United States plan or plot which intended to create multiple personality syndrome or dissociative personalities in children? Yes, to my knowledge. And that you were a victim of a plot of the United States, and that that's when your multiple personalities first began to develop. Yes. When did you become <coughs> aware that you were part of Monarch? I knew that I was aware of Monarch the whole time, as Wesley. From four years old, forward. At my creation. 1974. Yes. So that would be from seven years forward. You were aware of the creation of Wesley and the plan and the concept of the United States to cause you to dissociate. Yes. And now, what is your understanding of the reason that Monarch wanted children with disassociative disorders or multiple personality disorders? Because if one was captured in the future spying, the personality or the person that was captured would go into a personality that would have no useful information. There would be other personalities that would come out that would render the person to seem hallucinatory or to seem as if he was indeed crazy. In fact, their program, which was named Star Wars, was in fact a program in which we were taken aboard so-called alien spacecrafts, which were in tunnels in Colorado, which were not real spaceships, nor were they real aliens. We were simply induced with drugs so that we would not render reality to anything that we would see and later on if we ever related this information it would come out and appear as if we were crazy. 
so you were trained actually to be a spy? Yes. On behalf of the program known as Monarch? Yes. For the purpose of ultimately taking over the government of the United States? Yes. And the reason that you were uh, And the reason that the individuals in charge of the program wanted children with dissociative personalities or multiple personalities was so that they would not reveal the information that they gathered if captured in one of their other personas. Yes, if captured or in any other normal activity. Were you paid for your work in Monarch? No. How long did you work for Monarch? I do not consider it working for them. I consider it more or less them being in control of me. From 19, as I said, probably 1970 until 19, Are you currently controlled by Monarch? Yes. Are you fearful of the consequences of what you have revealed here today? Are you fearful that Monarch will somehow... Uh, uh, are you, do you feel that you are at risk by what you have revealed? Yes. Have you felt threatened in the past by the members of Monarch. Yes. And and when did you start feeling threatened by members of Monarch? From the breakdown of the, the multiple personality system, which happened in 1986, which allowed me to start revealing memories that other personalities contained about abuses. So once the breakdown started to occur, you became fearful that you were at risk because of that breakdown. Yes. Has anyone from Monarch ever contacted you since 1986? Yes. Who has contacted you from Monarch? I cannot reveal that because I do not know what their names are. They use code names? Yes. What are some of the code names that people use? The Eagle. What has the Eagle done that has been threatening? The Eagle makes phone calls that initiate hypnotic suggestive personalities, which are not real personalities, that were programmed in by Monarch. And what these codes that he says to me when he calls make the other personality or the suggestion come to pass, whereas I will do something in that personality and will not remember it at all in any other personality. It will be forgotten and I won't even have a record of it as myself. Did anyone from Monarch ever threaten you prior to 1986? No. Is Monarch in any way involved in any aspect of the claims that Paul Benassi has brought against the defendants in this lawsuit? No. You don't believe that Monarch is in any way involved in any kind of conspiratorial activity that involves child abuse or, or I, any of your other allegations? I know that they involve with child abuse because they have a lot of schools where they train girls to be prostitutes and boys as myself in the early days. They used us to, how shall I say, uh, get what they wanted. Let's what say did they want? They had a politician who liked girls or boys, men, women. They would get them into a uh, position where they would have that a boy or a girl or whatever it was with them. They would videotape it and use it later for blackmail. 
and you recognize and know the members of Monarch who, individuals who might have been involved in the Omaha area? I only have a few. Who are those people? Persons. I Bill Clemens. How do you spell his name? P L E M M O N S. Works off of Offit. Is he employed by the United States? I believe so. I am not. Bill Clemens is one of the individuals involved in training children. He is a controller, yes. Who else? Locally, I don't know any more names that I can What about other than locally? I said Colonel Aquino. Anyone else? There are others, but I would have to. Do you need to call upon another personality to remember the others? No. There are many. There are many. That's what I'd, and I'd like to know who, who those individuals are. Gary Ackerman. And where does Mr. Ackerman live? He is a congressman. I'm not aware of where he is from. You don't know which jurisdiction? No. And you're saying that he is a controller and part of this? He is uh, not a controller. He is a lead of the conspiracy. He's in charge of the conspiracy. He's one of the leads of the conspiracy. I am not able at this time to access much more information because of programs that were purposely put into me to I cannot place faces because they have programs that disallow that. We, they are simply erased and they have also used means to insert other names. Who programmed you? Involved. I was programmed by Monarch. Who? That includes psychiatrists from off of Air Force Base. Who is that? I do not know. They never allowed us to know names except for our direct controller, which was Bill Plummons. I only knew of a Colonel Aquino because I was also involved in the Temple of Set. When were you programmed? I was programmed beginning in 1974. Were you trained in... Um, <coughs> the area of, of prostitution and homosexuality? Yes. And where did that training take place? Off the Air Force Base. And did that also occur in 1974? Yes. And how long a period of time did that training last? Roughly 1974 until 1980. So during those years, you received periodic training uh, about homosexuality and about prostitution? Yes. Anything else that you've received training on? Yes. What? How to photograph documents in my mind to be able to relate that information to the programmers at a later date. Have you personally engaged in any spying? Nothing that would be considered spying, except for in training. I have not spied for them uh, because my training was not complete. I was still learning. Are they expecting that at some future time that you will engage in some form of spying or espionage? 
Not anymore. Why? Because the program was discontinued when the program started to break down in 1986. My initial program was to, as a young man, get adults who were powerful political leaders into positions where they could be compromised. That was your and mission? That was the initial mission. The whole mission was for me to go into the military service and become an officer, and a few years after that, retire from the service. Not retire after 20 years, but after six years. And move to Germany. And then their initial plan to take over or to run the government was to put me in an ambassador spot. And then later to come back to the United States and to run for an office, and they would be the ones who control everything that I did. So I mean, you would be an operative, so to speak? I would be a puppet. A puppet. And you say this plan broke down in 1986, but yet you told me that you still felt that you were under the control. I am still under the control because they, I do not answer phones anymore because that's how they, get the others to the triggers, is what I'll call them. They're not personalities. They contain no memories at all. They were put in as hypnotic suggestions and only come out when, as I said, a code is presented to them. And that happened several times in 1989, which is why Paul and Mikey's memories are so confused. At that time, they were attempting to destroy me because they were attempting to access suicidal personalities and other personalities that would get me in trouble with law enforcement. And the code that Mr. DeCamp was able to use uh, is a code that needs to be put in place before Wesley could reveal what you've just, what you are revealing now. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Let me understand and make sure that I'm clear about what you were targeted to do for Operation um, uh, I, I forgot the name of Monarch. It. Monarch. You were initially trained in the art <coughs> of homosexuality, prostitution, and espionage. Yes. And you have received that training from the period of 1970 up and through 1986. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. The second aspect of the plan that was in place for you was to put you in a position where you would have access to uh, people of importance or of political power so that they could be compromised by uh, by engaging in homosexual or ped pedophilic activities with you. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Then the third aspect of that was that you were to join the military where you would have a short career that would lead to a relatively early retirement. Yes. And after your retirement, you were to be sent to Europe in an ambassadorship. I was to go to Germany and to receive training and education and later I would become an ambassador for a period of a few years and then return to the United States to become a local. Um, you would become an elected puppet. official. Yes. Responsive to monarch. Yes. Now, as I understand it, you accomplished the first element of that. You went through the training that they provided. Yes. And you went through the second phase of that, which was to find people of political uh, 
or financial means in the community and, and put them in compromising positions. They found people, I didn't. Oh, okay, they so. They set up the engagements and the encounters with the person. I simply was told to, in when they program the personalities, or the triggers, as I called them, uh -huh. they would call me up and they would use a code. I would simply switch into that trigger, go to where they told me to go, whether it would be or get on an airplane because they would already have the tickets there. They would have the tickets there under a name that only that trigger would know and go to wherever it was there would be somebody waiting for them in that city and take them to wherever it was that they were supposed to go, bring them back to the airport, put them on the plane, they would come back home and as soon as they walked in the door the memory of everything that had just happened would be erased Gone. completely. Okay, now did Monarch pay for any or all of the travel that, that you've described um, during portions of your earlier testimony in this deposition where you said you had made a couple hundred trips to the coast? Mikey, Mikey did. I'm sorry, where Mikey testified that there had been meant lots of travel uh, over the years between 80 and 86. You is the question them. too long? No. no, I understand. Okay. Some of them, yes. So some of your travel was sponsored by Monarch? Yes. Uh, you said that Monarch targeted the individuals that you were to uh, uh, pursue and to compromise? Yes. Again, is that is that Mr. Plemons? Mr. Plemons or one of the other local callers. Okay, and you don't know the identity of the other local callers? No. Did Mr. Plemons or any of the other local callers ever target Harold Anderson? No. Did Mr. Plemons or any of the other locals ever target Mr. Bear? Yes. Do you recall who targeted Mr. Bear? It was after I had first met him and I was programmed to begin attending uh, parties that he held. So you were under a directive from the Monarch organization to attend and to encourage and to continue in a relationship with Mr. Bear so that ultimately he could be compromised. Is yes. that correct? Is the same true of Mr. Citron? No. What about Mr. Wadman? No. And you say it is not true with respect to Harold Anderson? No. Who else were you directed to target? Jerry Studs. Who is Jerry Studs? I am not aware of who he is a political figure. Okay. Do you recall any other names? I was not to target Barney Franks, but I was to meet with him on several occasions. And did you do that? Yes. That's Barney Franks, the congressman from Massachusetts. Yes. Were there any other individuals that you were targeted uh, to pursue? I am not aware of any of the other names. So your mission related, at least locally, only to Alan Bear and Peter Citron? No, not Peter Citron. I'm sorry. Only Bear and the person that had nothing mentioned, King. Larry King. Yes. How did you report on your activities? They would call me after I was done with the 
activity. And I was too tell them. So how often would you say you reported to your superiors on on your activities with Alan Bear and Larry King? Once a month. As I understand your testimony, the system broke down in 1986 as a result. Uh, leaks. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood. But the, the breakdown was consisted of leaks, which started flooding into Paul's memories and into the other mem other personalities started remembering things that happened to other personalities, and that's what initially started to break it down was being flooded with things that he thought were simply hellish nightmares. Okay, let me again make sure that I understand this. In 1986, by virtue of a breakdown of the personalities, Paul couldn't handle it. No. No, that's not right or no? No, he couldn't handle it. Paul could not handle it. Therefore, Paul wanted the others to get out of the the business of espionage and, and No, he didn't know about it. It was Mikey who began telling people things that had happened to him. And that was how when they would ask Paul about the things that Mikey had said, Paul was amazed or more stunned, remembering that he had not said that. When this began to happen, what did you tell your superiors in Monarch? I told them that uh, information was being disassociated. And they stopped asking you at that point to conduct operations? No, they attempted to correct the problem, but in April of 1986, when it became public, they then attempted to destroy all of their information by using phone calls to myself, which would start the process of eliminating memories. Did you feel that you were personally at risk in 1986 from members of the Monarch operation? Not at the start, no. How did they attempt to correct the situation before they uh, uh, in, decided to terminate the operation? In 1989, they attempted to reprogram, and they started to do this. I started to go to military bases, and I would simply and this is noted by my family and my grandmother who I lived with, I would simply disappear for days at a time, and nobody would know where I was, and I would come back completely unaware of my events. And what they were attempting to do was try and get me reintegrated into their program. And in 1989, shortly before my arrest, I was to target Alan Bear once again. Which military bases did you go to in 1989 for reprogramming? I went to Presidio, I went to Fort Riley, Kansas, and to Fort Ent. Or what? Ent. Air Force Base, Colorado, or the North American Civil or North American Air Defense Command. Do you recall what city that was in? It was near Colorado Springs. And again, do you recall the names of any of the individuals who tried to reprogram you in 1989? Colonel Michael Angelo Aquino himself attempted to do so. Are there any other individuals in Omaha that have 
served in the same capacity that you have served in with respect to the monarch operation? Yes, but the names are not available. Why? I do not know their true names. I only know them by their monarch name. Do you know how to get in touch with them? No. no. Where, where do you see them? I do not see them anymore. Do they also have multiple personality syndrome? Yes. So again, the multiple personality syndrome is a result of an active effort on the part of the United States to create in your person a variety of personalities. Partially. That was, that's not always the case with the multiple. I'm asking about in your case. In my case, most, yes. How, if at all, do the facts that you've testified to and the complaint that you that you brought against the defendants in this lawsuit relate to the monarch operation? In most cases, they do not. In Alan Bear's case, though, it does. Is that correct? Not completely. I met him before I was in, before Monarch directed me. During one of their programming, deprogramming sessions of me, they discovered that I had been with a man named Alan Bear, and they knew who he was. So they then utilized the relationship that you had already developed to further their own interests. Yes. Do you have any idea why Monarch was interested in Alan Bear? He was as far as I'm aware. Financial for financial purposes. I'm sorry. For financial purposes. They wanted Alan Bear's money. They wanted not really his money, but connections that he had with drug trafficking. It's what they really wanted, so they could bring drugs in and sell them and use the money for their program. So they believed that Alan Bear was engaged in drug trafficking and they wanted to tie into his operation? Yes. And they felt that if you could compromise him, that they would somehow be able to infiltrate this drug trafficking? Yes. Again, let me ask you, are are all of the people that you are aware of who are involved in the, in the operation uh, Satanists? No, not all. <clears throat> Many are Satanists? Yes. Do you have any knowledge about whether the monarch operation involves a United States sponsored sponsorship or whether it's just simply coincidental that many of the members of Monarch happen to be working for the government? I am not aware of Monarch's true producer. In words, I know that most, all of its leaders are politically inclined and are current and or members of Congress, the Senate, or uh, in high places in Russia. Are these individuals affiliated with NAMBLA?
issue. You were looking out into space and your eyes were darting around. Can, can you describe for me what thought process you were just going through? I have a process in my head that attempts to connect each memory with the person or group that they were involved with. What that means is I had to go through and look at Monarch and to see which individuals that Monarch was involved with and to see if Nambla came up on the list. Do you uh, conceptualize your thought process as similar or analogous to that of a computer? Yes. So, you have now told me that you don't believe that Monarch had any design or interest in uh, or, or plan for uh, contact with Robert Wadman? No. And the same would be true of all the other defendants with yes. the exclusions of Alan Bear and Larry King? None of them were targeted. Larry King was targeted, though. Larry King was and targeted. what was the purpose of targeting Larry King, as you understand it? Larry King was targeted because he had, in fact, already organized a group called, uh, with Craig Stunts in Washington, D.C., Cowboys or Bodies by God, which were organizations where men or boys were supplied to political leaders from both the United States and to foreign countries. Let's get back a little bit on track with this lawsuit. Had I not asked you the question about how the Wesley personality was formed in 1974, I don't believe that you would have revealed what you've just described, would you? Are there other aspects of your life or of Paul Benassi's life or any of the other personalities or persons known to Paul Benassi who have engaged in activities that you have not described at earlier portion, in earlier portions of your deposition testimony. Do you understand that question? Can I have it right back? Are there other aspects of your life or of Paul Benassi's life or any of the other personalities or persons known to Paul Benassi? who have engaged in activities that you have not described at earlier portion, in earlier portions of your deposition testimony. Do you understand that question? Other activities? Uh, you, let me strike that and, and try and ask it again. Wesley has just described what I will characterized as a significant activity and I'm talking about his or Paul's or Mikey's involvement uh, with the Monarch Project from 1970 to 1993. Yes. Do you Wesley consider that activity to be significant? Has, has the involvement with Monarch had a significant impact? Yes. And which personalities has the monarch activity impacted? Which personality? Which personalities of Paul? It's impacted Paul the most. What is the name of the individual who was known to monarch? Which of Paul's personalities? They knew him only like I'm saying my controller and those who program me only, they knew me as Paul Benassi, but the only thing that they ever referred to me 
was Wesley in training or in programming around other kids. Is there any other significant activity that occurred to the body of or the personalities of Paul Benassi that you, Wesley, feels was important on, on Paul's development? I don't understand. Okay, I'll try it again. You indicated that you would not have described the monarch activities had I not asked that one right question. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. I don't know what all of the right questions are to ask to be able to tap in to important elements or aspects of Paul and Paul's other personalities. I'm asking you, Wesley, to come forward with other information so that the facts can be developed and we can ask the right questions. Okay. Are there other areas that have not been explored in this deposition? Yes, but many of them aren't important to this deposition. But yes, there are some. Okay. Because this is described as the discovery phase of your lawsuit, I'm entitled to ask those questions. And then if it turns out that your lawyer believes or you believe that those areas are not relevant, your lawyer will get a chance to object so that they cannot be developed any further. But at this point in time, you're required by the law to answer the questions that I ask, even if you don't think they're relevant. Do you understand that? Okay. Will you describe to me those other areas that you've just referred to. The other areas I referred to are just Paul's memories of growing up. There's no abusive situations involved. It refers to his family, refers to his pets, refers to those areas. Everything that is of any relevance in any way, shape, or form to anything is not contained in any of those. And I believe that in at one time or another in the, the all the proceedings and stuff that all the information has been presented in a way that uh, if allowed to simply use my calendar which I have had that has everything date for date not com not exact dates because I went by the time of the year or the season that I can recall it most likely happening in. But that contains information as to what was the normal dates that I went to see the different individuals, the different parties that I went to, and I have not... Have you revealed all of that information in one form or another to the various committees and grand juries that you've testified in front of? Yes. But the but calendar you're mentioning has never... I, I don't have it. I'll the obtain it, I guess. The calendar has never been discussed. There are things in the calendar that it... What the calendar is, is it's, it's kind of like the completed jigsaw puzzle. Whereas before, information has gone out about certain activities, but they have been jumbled up. This was a calendar that I, I created, that I started on when I first went to jail. Okay, so it would be dated from 19, November of 1989 forward? Well, the dates on the calendar are from 1976 until 19, I believe, 80, up until the time of my arrest. I went through and put down, while all the other personalities were not aware of what was going on, I put down and circled dates which any other per so that any of the other personalities that would see it would see circles and that would not explain to them what the circles were there for. But what, what were it does, the circles for? The circles were dates that events happened. And you, Wesley, as the historian of all the personalities, knows everything that has happened 
since 19, since your creation in 1974. Yes. And all of the events which have occurred are recorded on that calendar. Yes. And the calendar was created in 1989, but 19, dates... It was begun in 19, early 1990, I believe. In early 1990, you went back and recreated the events in your life commencing in 1974. Yes, I took them off the computer, or my mind. Yes. So they were all cataloged in, in your mind by date? Yes. And you have a copy of this calendar? Yes. Is there any reason that you haven't produced it? I have not been out or willing until today to do so. I do not have it. I will obtain it. Are there any other personalities that are not out? No. Just Paul, Poppy, Mike, and me. In order to get a complete and accurate and full accounting of the events that form the basis of this lawsuit, do the defendants need to talk to Wesley? Do they need to talk to me? Yes. I will provide that information. But Wesley is the only person or personality that can provide a complete... That can decipher the calendar, and I can do that for you. I will. And yes, I am the only one that can. Why don't we go off the record for a minute? Ready? Ready. Uh, am I talking to Paul or am I talking to Wesley? I'm Wesley again. Are you Wesley? Yes. Um, is that W E S L E E? Two words. Your name? Yes. I, I, I didn't hear before. I wasn't, I wasn't sure. Is that a first name and a last name? Yes. All right. Uh, you were t uh, Miss uh, Miss Wendy Miss Hahn uh, had asked you about uh, the monarch operation